Hey GP learners, do you want to know how to examine the musculoskeletal system via video consultation? In this episode I'm going to show you exactly how to do that, particularly for the upper part of the body. So let's tech enhance your primary care and learning. If this is the first time we're meeting, I'm Dr Gandalf of EGP Learning, where I look supporting you with technology enhanced primary care and learning. And in this episode, I'm going to show you my tips and tricks for doing musculoskeletal examinations through video consultation route. So don't forget to subscribe, but let's get straight to it, shall we? So the first thing I'm going to say is that these tips and tricks that I've got to help you do these kind of consultation methods are not validated. Let's be clear on this point, but a lot of them do use validated tests and adapting them through a video consultation route. When you start the consultations with the patients, it's important to identify to them that they need to be suitably exposed. So when I arrange video consultations, particularly when I've transferred from an online or a telephone consultation to a video consultation, I'll indicate to the patient, actually when we do this, it's helpful if you're suitably exposed, so ideally wearing a t-shirt, or if it's the lower part that we're looking at, ideally wearing shorts. So you've got movement and mobility. The other thing that's worth advising the patient is that they've got somewhere to place the phone so that you can see them and they can do the things using both their hands and they've got complete movement. It can be useful to ask them to see if they've got somebody with them that can hold the device or use a phone stand. A really interesting craze lately is that many people are using TikTok and actually getting used to standing in front of their phone so that they can dance and move and all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of similar. Just advise them to do that. And if you don't know what TikTok is, nah, I'm going to do it, but don't worry about it. So when it comes to examining the musculoskeletal system through video consultation, the basic principles are look, move and feel if you can. And some parts are universal no matter which kind of joints and parts of the body you're looking at. So for the MSK system, particularly when you're looking at joints and muscles, look for things like wasting of the muscles, changes and obvious deformities, swelling of the joints, visible discomfort, nodules and plaques. Those are simple things that you can easily inspect for and keep an eye out for those as you're looking at the patient. If you see something you're not sure of, ask the patient to put decent light on it. And it's important to remember that you do need decent light when you're doing these examinations in the first place. So make sure you check out some of my other tips that show you how to do that. Anyway, if we're looking at the upper part of the body, let's get started and working our way from the top to the bottom. So first off, we're going to start looking at the neck. One of the benefits of video consultation is that you can look at the patient and get them to show you exactly where the problem is. Because the neck sometimes can be a bit nebulous when you get that initial online consultation or little information from the reception team about what the problem may be. Getting the patient to show you exactly which part of the neck is causing a problem is invaluable. Additionally, you can observe the patient as they go through range of movement tests. So whether that's flexion of the neck, extension of the neck, and turning towards either side, checking for full range of motion, and as well, inclining the neck. And the real benefit of video consultation is that you can also show the patient how to do the specific movement. So if there is any confusion, you can show them how to do it. Clearly, if particular movements either elicit restriction in movement or pain, then you can analyze that in more detail. But are there any special tests you can do for the neck? You could ask the patient to palpate the tender areas to give you a clearer idea of where it is tender, but things like Sperling's test are probably not going to be easily done. However, the shoulder abduction test is a simple test that you can ask the patient to do whilst you're observing them. So simply you ask the patient to put the affected arm up onto their head, and that should lead to some relief of the symptoms. If that's the case, then there may be some cervical nerve pressure. It's important to remember this is not the most sensitive of tests, but pretty good for specificity. And important to bear it in mind with the other clinical information. Next up we've got the shoulder and the shoulder is a joint that can work really well by video consultation route. As with the previous stuff about inspection there are various movements you can get the patient to do that can give you information about what may be the problem. So there's the compound movements so getting the patient to externally rotate and abduct their shoulders so simply hands on the head and then there's also internal rotation and adduction, which is basically arms behind the back. If the patient can do that, there's highly unlikely any specific pathology with those kind of areas that you need to be worried about. If there was some discomfort, then you can narrow down. It's clearly challenging to check passive action, but active action is really easy to do. So simple flexion and seeing how high they can go. Extension external and internal rotation and let's not forget 
abduction and adduction. But remember, if you're getting them to do both arms at the same time for adduction, careful they don't end up doing the floss. Yeah, I have no idea how to do it. But it's important to remember with the shoulder specifically, there are other movements that you can potentially do via video consultation. So Job's test is one that many of you are probably aware of. Simply, you get the patient to abduct the shoulders at 30 degrees forward in line with the scapula, turn the thumbs upside down, and this is the part where they may need somebody else. So either somebody to apply pressure, or you can even ask them to do it against a shelf or a wall to force upwards and see if that elicits any pain or difficulty in terms of weakness. The last part may need additional support, and I'd recommend taking the examination with a little pinch of salt, but clearly if they do that without any difficulty is reassuring. Can you assess the painful arc via video consultation? Mm, debatable. You can easily ask the patient to lift their affected arm up for passive flexion and then remove their hand to see how well they do, bring it down themselves and seeing if that elicits any pain. Clearly if it does, that may be suggestive of a painful arc. A really interesting test to do via video consultation is Hornblower's test because this is simply them lifting their arm up as if they're blowing a horn. And what you're looking for is whether the elbow goes up or if it doesn't like that, being a positive test and suggesting some teres minor pathology. And some of you may remember Gerber's test that looks at subscapularis. Now this is a trickier test to do, but possible via video consultation. And I'm gonna to have to turn to show you. So simply, you ask the patient to put their affected arm behind their back. Then you ask them to place their other arm in front of it, like that. Flex the wrist so it applies a minor amount of pressure and then ask them to push with their affected arm against the hand. The reason for doing that is having the unaffected hand in the flex position actually applies a little bit of pressure and as a result of that, you can check to see if there's any problems in the affected shoulder. Important to remember though, this won't really work if the patient's got pain in the unaffected wrist or in the shoulder, because otherwise that may cause additional discomfort that raises questions about the test. Clear if there's somebody else there with the patient, you can ask them to help support you do this, but it is possible. And then the last one is the scarf test that many of you are probably aware of to look at problems with the AC joint. So simply ask the patient to lift their arm up, touch their unaffected shoulder, and then using their other hand to bring it across and see if that causes pain. It should be a little bit of stretching, but shouldn't be painful, and particularly not at the AC joint. If that's the case, they may have some dysfunction going on there. So that's how you can do some of the shoulder examinations by video consultation. Moving on to the elbows now. So again, inspection is really important. So asking the patient to extend their elbows fully, seeing if there's an extra element of varus or valgus. I don't have either, so hopefully that's okay. But you can also inspect the elbow to see if there's any obvious signs. For example, like an olecranon bursa. You know, that little golf ball that potentially sits there and how you may need to manage that. Is it possible to confirm if the patient's got tennis or golfer's elbow through video consultation? Well, I think it's possible that you can try. So for medial epicondylitis, you ask the patient to hold their elbow in a flex position, put pressure there, and simply ask them to flex their wrist. And ideally, you want them to do that against some resistance to see if that causes additional pain. If it does, that would potentially suggest there's issues at the medial epicondyle area. Alternately, if you're looking at tennis elbow, just simply ask the patient to turn their hand over, ask them to apply pressure at the point where it's tender, and then extend the wrist up potentially against some force, and as a result of that, if that causes pain, it may suggest tennis elbow or lateral epicondylitis. It's important to remember these are validated tests, but because you're getting the patient to do them, it's using an element of your own clinical reasoning to assess if that's effective or not. Next, we're going to the wrist. So there's various parts you can ask the patient to palpate and move. You could try and get them to do things like Finkelstein's test, but to be honest, that's a bit tricky. However, a couple of tests that are really easy to do through a video consultation are Phelan's and Tinnels. And this is checking for carpal tunnel syndrome. So in terms of Phelan's, simply ask the patient to put their hands together as if they're trying to pray and then lift their elbows up. And if you're doing this through a video consultation format, you can actually show the patient what you mean. Similarly, reverse Phelan's, just switch it round and apply some pressure. 
In terms of assessing tinnels, that's again quite easy. And I tend to show the patients what I want them to do when this happens. So I ask them to show that me their wrist, put two fingers on the middle and just tap for a good 20 seconds or so. Talk to them as they do it. And then I simply ask, have you got any tingling or numbness in the middle fingers or in that area past the wrist? If they say yes, it looks like it's a positive tinnels test. It's important to remember that you can check for the other things as we mentioned earlier. So signs of muscle wasting, obvious deformities, swelling of the joints. You can even ask the patient to feel and see if they feel a little spongy. Is it possibly synovitis? Nodules, plaques, breaks in the skin, and obvious erythema. I think I've added some extra ones in there, haven't I? But hopefully that gives you a flavour of the kind of things that you can easily do through a video consultation or telemedicine format when it comes to examining the upper part of the body and musculoskeletal system. Which was your favourite tip? Let me know in the comments below. Have you got additional tips that you find really useful when it comes to examining patients through this route? Definitely let me know on those. If you would like to check out some of our other videos that show you how to do examinations through a telemedicine or video consultation route, just have a look at this playlist right up here. And if you're watching on YouTube, actually we'll be showing you some additional recommendations that are coming up right here for you. I hope you found this episode useful. As always, if you've got any comments or questions, contact me, whichever route you prefer. Definitely subscribe, ring the bell to get all of our content first and foremost. And as always, EGP Learning is here to help save you and your patients time by tech enhancing your primary care and learning. And I'll catch you in the next episode.